House of the Dead, Overkill. Now, be forewarned that I'm going to be using a lot of strong language in this, because trust me, if you can't handle strong language, this game is not for you. If you're not familiar with the, the House of the Dead series, you've got way more small change than the rest of us. And in that case, let me give you a brief introduction. It started in 1998 with the first one, uh, originally just for arcades, I believe. And you'd go in there, drop a small coin in, pick up the, um, the guns, aim at the screen, and have a really good time. It later also came to the PC, and since then, um, a second and third has also come out and also made it to the PC. I've heard that there's a fourth, but I've never played it personally. I think it's something like that one's exclusively for the arcades, or it's for a specific console or something. I've never played it, never seen any footage from it, so I can't comment on it. The thing about the first three is, being made by Sega, they're really, really... I think it's Japanese. Basically, if you've played one of those games that are that have their dialogue translated, I mean, Silent Hill gets away with it fairly well, but here the dialogue is just so clearly awkward. Nobody has ever uttered the shit that they say in the first three games. And it's also astonishingly poorly delivered. And every other line is like what you'd find on that little piece of paper inside a fortune cookie. The third one actually almost had good acting, it just... They still had to work with the horrendous dialogue that nobody could make sound good. Now, I personally really like the first one, the original. The second one is not quite as good, but it definitely has some stuff that would... I mean, if you haven't tried it and you like rail shooters, I'd definitely go for both the first and the second one. The third one's also pretty good, but it feels very rushed, and it's not quite as flawlessly programmed as the first two are. Anyway, enough of that. Overkill completely changed things and fixes everything that was wrong with the first three. Anything that you could complain about in those three is fixed here. For example, you can play the levels one by one. There are seven chapters in total, and it'll save each time you've successfully completed one. Whereas in the others, you had to play all of them in a row without any real breaks, unless you press pause if you have it on the PC or something. And, you know, in any case, the game's going to be a strain on the wrist. All four of them are. But with this one, they could amp it the fuck up for each of the seven, because you don't have to play more than one in a row, so they could just go completely fucking nuts for each of the seven, and they do. There is just a constant stream of zombies coming your way, and you constantly have to be blowing them apart. There's also a couple of power-ups, like um, one that uh, makes everything go in slow-mo for, I don't know, a couple of seconds, including, like, lines of dialogue and the music, everything is slowed down. Now, as you may already know, this it uses the style and tone of an exploitation film, a grindhouse picture. Now, you might know what that is from the film Grindhouse, um, of, you know, composed of two halves, one by Quentin Tarantino, one by Robert Rodriguez. Basically, after television started showing movies, you know, theaters had to either, you know, just close down or think of something to attract people, and they went for something that the television didn't show. Basically, tons of violence, sex, bizarre subject matter, and, you know, these grindhouses would show them in a row, you know, one right after the other. And what this game does is make each of the chapters like of another grindhouse picture. So, 
in between each you have like a little brief introduction kind of thing with this trailer man voice kind of thing introducing each of them and they all have these perfect titles for exploitation flicks like the fetid waters and scream train and shit like that the story is also quite good and it's got some fairly good twists as well you play as uh, either uh, Detective Washington, uh, a black guy, who's just constantly, you know, she's saying motherfucker and shit, and, um, or as um, AMS Agent G. The voice acting is spot on, and these two play off each other like, you know, a buddy cop, mismatched couple kind of thing. Now this is for the Wii, but the graphics are really, really good. And there's a ton of gore. I mean, you can blow the enemies completely apart to an even greater extent um, than you could in the first three, and that says a lot. There's also a ton of different types of zombies, often specific to the location, and all seven of the um, chapters have a pretty interesting and memorable location. One of them's like a carnival, and there are clown zombies, and yeah, I don't exactly know either if like this and Zombieland got the exact same idea at the exact same time or if one of them somehow you know took it from the other. The sound is really cool and the music just fits so perfectly. I'm not enough of an expert on music to say exactly what but what I can say is there's some country western um, there's some somber electric guitar and there's something that I think might be disco and anytime there's lyrics to the music it's just ridiculously obscene this is also even more disgusting than any of the first three and there's some incredibly sick stuff in this game I mean it takes a lot to gross me out and yeah but it's absolutely hilarious.